Nation, a place that celebrates every kind of food from every kind of place, like foods from the sky, to foods from the soil, all the way down to foods from the sea. Mmm, fish. Ooh, hi, whoa, ha. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me you like fish without telling me you like fish. Am I right? Oh, okay, bye. <laughs> Speaking of fish, my friend Tyra and Kid Food Nation hero Kaylin are going fishing. Ooh, I wonder what they'll catch. Mmm, oh yeah, I like fish. Hey, I should probably text Tyra just to make sure she arrived. You know, in case she slept in or something and I have to step in last minute and go fishing too. You never know. Okay, you caught me. I was going fishing for an invite. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's bring on the fish. Coming up on Kid Food Nation, Tyra goes to a shore lunch with this week's KFN hero, Kaylin. But first, they're catching their very own fish on Lake Kuchiching. Plus, we'll learn more about how Anishinaabe people have been catching and cooking fish for thousands of years. Hi, I'm Kaylin. I'm 11 years old and I'm a member of the Chippewas of Rama First Nation in Ontario. When I'm not doing schoolwork, I love fishing, camping, hockey, and lacrosse. I'm also a pretty good cook. My family loves my traditional fried fish caught fresh from the lake. Wow, it is so peaceful out here. So nice feeling the breeze on my skin, smelling the fresh, crisp air, hearing the crunch of leaves under my feet. <sighs> oh. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> it's OK. You're right, though. It really is beautiful out here. One thing I love about this place is that I'm so close to all my family and friends. And this is actually going to be my first time fishing. Well, you're in good hands, Tyra. Let's go meet Corey. After a day with him, you'll be a fishing pro. Come on. Ani, Tyra, and Kaelin. Ani means hello in Nishnabemun, the language of our people. Ani and Corey, thanks so much for having me. Corey is a cultural land-based educator. He's a member of the Roman First Nation, too. And don't forget, I'm also a really great chef. My name is Corey Snake, also known as Gnu, which means Golden Eagle in Ojibwe. I know about harvesting and hunting and crafting in the spiritual ways of our people. I'm so glad you're here, Tyra. In addition to fishing, I'm also going to teach you Ojibwe words. The first word is gigon, which means fish. Awesome. What kind of gigon are we going to try and catch today? Bass could be perch and even pickerel. What we're going to do is prepare a shore lunch, something our people used to do as guides for tourists that would come to the area. So we take what we caught and cook up a nice meal that we'd all share together. It's going to be delicious. So you're going to head down to Lake Kuchiching and meet community elder Mark Douglas. He's going to talk more about the lake and its beautiful history. Are you excited? Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Anin, Mark. Anin, Tyra. So where are we right now? We're on the shores of Lake Kuchiching in the heartland of the Ojibwe territory. Tell me a little bit about the history of Lake Kuchiching. Maybe you got a couple of days. <laughs> the drainage from here goes into the Great Lakes. There's a fence not too far from here, and it's the way we caught and trapped fish. They say our fence is older than the pyramids at Giza. It's over 5,000 years old. Over 5,000? Wow. The deep water fish would be coming into this lake. It's shallow to spawn, and we would trap and catch our fish there. Everyone was welcome, and everybody went home with some. Who taught you to fish? My father would fish with other men, and I'd tag along. I didn't know what I was doing for the longest time, but I had all these men to study from, they were experts. Fish life is the first food that's given to us by the Creator, and every spring, my grandmother, she'd make fish head soup. She would listen until we were able to pop an eyeball from the fish crunch. She would then know that we were getting our vitamins and nutrients that we needed. All right, Tyra, it's time to catch some lunch. Got any good tips for paddling? Uh, yeah, don't tip. <laughs> Easy as that, huh? Why is a canoe the perfect vehicle for the lake? They're lightweight, you can transport them easily, and you can make them traditionally out of things from the land themselves, like birch bark and even elm bark. All right, I'm gonna show you how to portage a canoe. Portaging comes from the French word to carry. So I'm gonna go into a seating position, lift this up, and you can balance the boat just like you're sitting. I'm gonna reach across to the opposite gunnel. I'm gonna swing it up to my shoulders. One, two, and three. And up I go. Whoa, that's so cool. 
then you can walk away. Is anybody going to help me? Tyra? Kaylin? Got it. Oh, miigwech, Tyra. Thanks so much. Do we need to be really quiet? Fish can hear things like bangs on your boat, paddles hitting the side of a canoe. So it's good to be as silent as possible. Ooh. And they could see really well too. Fish can see us? Yeah, and they can look vertical, they can look sideways, and it's part of their survival mode. What's the best time of day to catch a fish? They get hungry the same time we do. So fish are looking for breakfast, lunch, and dinner too. Yeah, for sure. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> it's a catfish. It's a catfish. What? what? See the whiskers? Yeah, don't touch those, they'll spike you. Wait, the whiskers are spiky? They have little barbs on them. Really? Yeah. I've done that. It was just a baby catfish, and I was on the lake and tried to catch it because I didn't know. So we learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. And in Ojibwe, we call this a wasi. 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 I'm going to release it nice and gentle. Whoa! Jeez. I and away it goes. <laughs> it was ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, how do you say canoe in Ojibwe? The word for canoe is also similar to our word for kissing because the actions are actually similar because you smack your lips together and the canoe smacks the water. So we call it Jimon. 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 And our word for kissing is Jimshin. 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 There's other great words. We call water nibe. 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 And that has to do with how water is the essence of life. Most of our language is very descriptive and it has to relate to the earth. That tells of our worldview as Ojibwe people. We're out catching gigon in the Jimon. Yes. Is that right? Yes. <gasps> Wait a minute, speaking of fish. Oh, something's happening. Oh, nice. All right, so reel it in. Okay. And you want to go nice and smooth. Oh. So don't reel it in too fast because you don't want to force the lure out of the mouth. Here it comes. Great, keep going. What? <laughs> well, can't win every time, I guess. <laughs> I'll keep it just in case I find the other one. New pair of shoes. I guess we can't eat that, huh? No nutrients in a boot, only bootrients. Huh? You guys are busy, okay. Do fish laugh? Probably. Thank you, I'll be here all day. Hmm, my jokes seem to be keeping the fish away. Good thing Cory caught some pickerel this morning. I'm getting hungry. It's time to cook. <laughs> First things I like to do is to prep my potatoes. They actually take the longest to cook. Here we have what we call panig in Ojibwe, and that's potatoes. Oh, it's super important to have an adult around when you're using a knife. One thing you want to do is to make sure to use butter. That way your pan's lubricated nicely so everything cooks. It also adds a good flavor to the food itself. Kaylin, it's also very important to wear oven mitts so you don't burn your hands and that you stay safe. Mmm, that smells so good. So I have here a filet of pickerel. I'm gonna cut this pickerel into smaller portions. You wanna ensure that it fits in the pan. And with this, I'm gonna douse it in a little bit of oil. We gotta make sure it's on all sides so that the flour sticks to the fish. I'm gonna put it all over the fish like so ready to go. And you always start with the skin side down first. And you want to make sure your fillets are typically the same thickness and width so everything cooks at the same pace. And then you let the pan do its work for you. That looks so delicious. When the meat itself starts to go golden brown, that's the perfect time to take it off the fire and to eat. Speaking of fire, you know, you should always have an experienced adult around when you're making a fire. How do you say fire in Ojibwe? In my community, we say shkode. Shkode. It literally means new heart. Our people believe that fire is a living entity. You're creating a new being, a new spirit. The food is ready for you to try. How do you say thank you in Ojibwe? We say miigwech. Miigwech, Cory. Miigwech. This is so good. This is really good, Corey. Manup good. That means it tastes good in Ojibwe. Ah, manup good. I'm glad you like it. After we eat, we want to put up the fire and we make this place the same way we found it. Miigwech, Corey. Miigwech, Kaylin. I'm so grateful to both of you and Mark for teaching me about your First Nation and its history and the Ojibwe language and also fishing. Speaking of which, does anyone else want to... Get back in the canoe? Yeah. Let's go. What was that tip again? 
Don't tip, do tip. That water does look refreshing. Hey, you guys want to hear another fish joke? Really, Tyra? President's Choice Children's Charity is putting the power of food in your hands. You can check out ytv.com backslash kidfoodnation to learn more about the movement. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some fishing of my own to do. Here, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy. Oh, ooh. come on, fishy. Come on. Oh, I almost had it.